one of the, um, the very exciting, interesting decriminalization models around the world. Well, I'm going to try to insist for you to repeat my name in the Greek of Brazil. Try it. <laughs> try it. Okay. Try it. Okay. <laughs> real. Okay. I was trying this joke. Um, I have a presentation which I'm not going to use, so, so we have more time for discussion. I'm going to just uh, take a few points. Uh, uh, I would like to come back to, to your your definition of decriminalization. Uh, you said uh, no penalties for drug use, but no penalties for possession for personal use. We had a long discussion with the INCB, and then uh, 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 the conclusion is that yes, we can have total depenalization of uh, uh, use of, of drugs, but not personal possession. What we uh, applied in, uh, in our legislation is that it's uh, when somebody possesses drugs uh, in minor quantities, it's misdemeanor, so you can get a fine, but uh, it's still illegal. So this is, this is the, the model that uh, we uh, were able to, to put uh, in practice to be within the current uh, existing conventions. So, uh, I mean, uh, your definition would not apply fully to 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 Czech situation, though uh, uh, I think most countries in EU uh, have similar practices. Leading with, uh, you can see my colleague and counterpart from Portugal uh, and few other countries. Uh, I have my colleague here from police who can uh, maybe say a few words how it is in practice. If if we have a discussion, because I, I believe the the purpose of this session is to discuss, not only us here in the panel talk, but uh, uh, I would like to pick three main, in my view, myths that we always have around the drug policies, because the drug policies are full of best wishes, uh, full of myths, what works, what, what actually is the problem, etc. I would like to uh, pick three myths that, I, myths that I think are quite important to, to look at. One, what comes first, supply or demand? Uh, Czech Republic, and I'm going to just show a few, few practical examples. Czech Republic has the longest history of methamphetamine production. Our main drug, pro, uh, drug injecting uh, drug problem is is uh, methamphetamine. It's not opiates. It's not heroin. It's been there for more than four decades now in Czech Republic. It's 70 percent of injecting drug users use methamphetamine. Uh, the interesting point is that the first two decades of the kind of the developing of of the drug scene uh, in the 70s and 80s. It was without man, money involvement. I heard somebody from uh, uh, from Europe telling me that uh, it's how the mafia uh, makes it. They, they flood the market uh, for, with the drugs for free, but that's not that was not the case in the public. It was users learned to produce in home in small quantities in a small home, uh, kitchen laboratories, learn from each other, and that's how the whole problem spread. It shows that the drugs problem is much more than, than money driven. It's a pleasure driven problem and uh, uh, forbid pleasure, forbid sex, forbid uh, uh, people to, to be drunk, it's not possible. What you can actually do, that's what we learn <coughs> through try and error, uh, that what you actually can do is just minimizing harms and risks. You actually cannot come with the idea of uh, let's have society free of drugs, let's put a lot of pressure and it will happen. It doesn't happen because people will sell everything for pleasure, their houses, their families, you name it. Yes? So that's what's been happening between 
between uh, before before the 90s, when the revolution came to the Czech Republic and the communist regime uh, stopped, and then our country and the, the the metal fencing, the Iron Curtain fall, and all of a sudden uh, there was a free trade, uh, and uh, obviously new drugs were coming to Czech Republic, and at that point, uh, I can say. You can see on this map, uh, the Czech Republic is heart of Europe, um, but also it's, it's, it's a place where our history had all kind of armies crossing over, all kind of cultures crossing over, and uh, we had so many experiences with so many ideologies. Uh, we are a very skeptical nation, I would say. As Czechs, we are a very skeptical nation, so we don't want to kind of buy quick uh, uh, ideas that will save uh, all the people in Czech Republic and we are all going to be happy. So, so in the 90s we, well, we had economic uh, uh, transform in, in our, our society, similar I think to what happened in, in Portugal, for example, <coughs> when I heard my colleague speaking about why they decriminalize actually drugs. Drugs is very similar situation. We were not that rich to, to come with uh, ideological experiments. So we thought, what what can be the minimum we can do? We had at that point very enlightened uh, colleague of mine who was my predecessor, Dr. Bam, who who was a medical doctor appointed as a drug czar or as a uh, uh, national coordinator, very much closely linked to the Prime Minister, who started promoting the <coughs> idea, okay, let's look at the evidence, because we don't have so much money to throw too much money to, to uh, overload prison, etc., and see what can work. And uh, actually at that point, uh, we learned that uh, the word harm reduction for us became more than just type of service and it, it was a type it was a philosophy that we actually started formulating uh, our uh, national strategy uh, around so from the 90s we were trying to experiment with different type of legislation uh, finally we arrived to what I said uh, and approved by the INCB um, Czech Republic outcomes, uh, I have it all in numbers, but I don't want to bore you with this. Uh, we have the lowest, at this moment, <coughs> the lowest overdose rate in the whole planet. We have less than 20 people dying of overdoses uh, in Czech Republic. Uh, we don't, we're not that uh, uh, successful with alcohol. That's about 10 times higher. Uh, uh, we have under 1% of HIV infections or, or prevalence among, among uh, injecting drug users. Hepatitis C was quite high in the 90s, it was about 60% among injecting drug users, it dropped down to 20%. Um, and of course uh, the, the prisons are not overloaded with, uh, with minor uh, with minor uh, uh, drug crimes, though it's quite difficult, maybe, uh, to, to look at the uh, uh, enforcing the law of the mis mis misdemeanor uh, way. Um, so, I would say the second myth that I would like to point is that uh, we often hear the rhetorics saying if we go a little bit more liberal. Uh, we open a Pandora box and we don't know what's going to happen because something, wait three minutes, something horrible is going to happen. And I would argue, I have three minutes, so I, I'm going to just say a statement. Let's close the Pandora box. I think a uh, Czech, Czech situation showed that it does work. Though, as my colleague from Portugal often <coughs> stresses, and I would like to to join the statement, uh, it has to come with enough money uh, in the, in the, our budget of the government to support prevention and treatment, harm reduction as such in, 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 the whole, in the whole approach. 
Otherwise, if we have uh, only on one side decriminalized legislation, but no possibility of helping people, it's not going to work. Uh, finally, drug use is an immoral act. I don't want to preach to the converted, but it's still there. It's still in many hands. In Czech Republic, I don't, I'm not going to name one of, one of the previous government member uh, uh, once took me aside and said, you know, Mr. Bobadil, you, send, you put them in the queue, and if you shoot every second one, everybody will stop you with uh, drugs. I mean, we've seen in the world so many times this, this kind of trials, and what happened? Uh, we know that uh, <coughs> we even they find it in our medical uh, medical uh, manual that uh, addiction is an illness. We also know, uh, I would like to, I can see <coughs> my colleague, the director of EMCDDA, uh, this, this, uh, this book uh, which said, speaks about comorbidity of substance use and mental health disorders. Uh, we know that very high number of people who are problem drug users are people with primarily other men mental and other health issues. <coughs> so uh, if we uh, diverse the, the direction and start helping, uh, uh, our statistics showed uh, that it, it worked. Uh, we have, uh, I, know, I know that in the 80s and the 90s, and that's the final, uh, uh, final sentence, the, the biggest trouble uh, in injected drug use in Europe and the biggest threat was not uh, criminal uh, or public safety, it was the public uh, health threats such as HIV and hepatitis C. And that's why we started looking for different instruments because we learned even if we have the best treatment, abstinence treatment programs, which I always argue for, that it's, it's a good thing to have. But uh, we don't have other possibilities. The people come very late, and uh, we, we named it. We, we found out that there is something that we can call something we call a hidden population, which doesn't come and ask for help. They come very late, after 10 years of, of, of uh, drug use, etc. Now, in Czech Republic, we learned that if we just open in every district, quite cheap, let's say, services, what we call low threshold. I know that many of you who are sitting here know it and agree with me. We have two thirds of of the drug using population in some contact with helping helping uh, uh, professionals, which brings the outcomes that I mentioned uh, about the problem. And I think the Czech example summarizes very well what Edward has said.